Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to talk about this the Acer Store AST 10 G3 and I'll be straight with you I kind of wish they come up with a catchier name for this like they did with most of their NAS series drive store locker store really rolls off the tongue doesn't it but this card which by the way I'm now going to refer from this point forward as the Acer Store combo card is exactly that it is a card that gives you the option to add both a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection and two M2 NVMe slots to your NAS. But before we go any further, I think we should probably address why would you need this, given that a lot of the more modern generation solutions from Acer Store, particularly, and let's focus on that, the new Locker Store uh, 2, 4, and 6 Gen 2 series, arrive with four M2 NVMe slots. It was one of my biggest praises about the hardware architecture on that Gen 2 system, notwithstanding that the Gen 2 system upgraded pretty much everything from the CPU to the memory to the connectivity in many ways of the Gen 1 series from the Locker Stores there, I would say that when it came to that four M2 NVMe slots built into the top there on a card internally that I'll show you in just a moment, that for me was one of the things that really stood out. It gave people the ability to use a four base system like this, but secretly, and I don't mean secretly too much, it was an eight bay system. So the two was a six bay, the four was an eight bay, and the six was a 10 bay system, giving you the ability to use both. And those M2 NVMe slots can be used for pools and they can be used for caching as well. Some lovely options all built in there. Run a few VMs from them, lovely stuff. Run a few apps from them, lovely stuff. Run the OS from them, lovely stuff. And that is where this card started to form. Because one of the things that was missing from this was 10 GBE connectivity there. Yes, these systems arrived with uh, those red 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and Fair play to Acer Store. They were one of the first brands to embrace 2.5 GBE at this scale. Indeed, their Nimbus Store, I believe back in 2019, was the first domestic 4 bay NAS that has 2.5 GBE. Um, having 2.5 GBE on this, especially when you factored in M2 NVMe SSDs and four SAT storage bays, that was just not going to cut it and it needed more oomph. Now, up to this point, there was a 10G card you can install inside this. You could take a 10 gigabit Ethernet card from Acer Store, pop it in there, boom, you got yourself your 10, 10 gigabit Ethernet external connection there. But then you lost the M2s, which again was one of the real standout moments of this device, which brings us circling all the way back to this lovely card here, the ability to have both. Now, there are elements of compromise, I'll be straight with you, and we are, of course, going to make comparisons between this and the combo cards currently available from some of their competitors like Synology and QNIP, because I do think that bears comparison. But for now, we talked about the hardware spec. I'm sure somewhere on screen it's been there. Let's open up this. So there's our retail box. Fairly standard stuff there, detailing the card and what you're getting inside. We'll remove that label out of the box. We have the card itself and I would say it's one of the smaller versions of these cards that I've seen it's even smaller than the QNAP one there and um, inside as well we have in terms of accessories we have an external um, was it a uh, back plane there for uh, both medium and full depth and again bear in mind these are the hooked variant there and that's because they're going in larger arrays this system on the other hand needs a complete flat backplane adapter there at half so again the default state of this card is with no um, backplane adapters already pre-applied but you've got the screws there and you can apply it so there is the card there and as you can see there at the top we are talking about copper we're talking about 10g base t there at the top end there there is an onboard controller there as well there should be images and an article linked in the description below if it's not live now it should be live the next few days and then we've got that flat plane heat sink there across the top now because the m2 nvme slot are on the on side here that four port card inside this system is right at the top of the system with an additional ventilated cool there at the top there isn't actually a huge amount of space in terms of heat sinks when we did my original review on this one of the things i was a little disappointed by was the lack of either adhesive based heat sinks there that are normally these cost literally cents to include or an option of heat sinks that actually arrived with the system that you could pre-apply there so on the one hand i am pleased this card arrives with the heat sinks already good to go on that board but i would say 
That is one of the smallest M2 heat sinks that I've seen on a number of combo cards, and I'll be doing some comparisons in just a moment. But overall, the card design is pretty straightforward, you know, exactly what you'd expect. The ability to give you two M2 NVMe slots and the 10 GBE, as opposed to the four inside there, and leverage some of that PCIe connectivity inside. Now, we've got to talk about that leveraging, because uh, another thing about this card that's kind of surprised me is it's a Gen 3 times 2 connector there at the bottom almost certainly because the slot inside this device and other members of that locker store series and other NASs by the way from Acer Store that support this card um, they are gen 2 as well so the result is that on a gen 3 times 2 connector you are looking at 4000 megabytes per second throughput for all of the connections on this card and that port there which means that although you've got the m2s on there and the 10g You've only got 4,000 to play with. Now, of course, 1,000 is going to go for our little connector there, that copper base 10G there at the top. That's 3,000 left for those connections there. But I'm not entirely certain, hopefully at the time of record, uh, uh, editing, it'll be there on screen, whether these are Gen 3 times 1 each or Gen 3 times 2 side by side. So a times 2, a times 2, and that one on the end. But that still means that that's quite a lot of potential bandwidth going into this. But then again, the connection on that Acer store is Gen 3 times 4 internally, presumably because of the lane limitations from that CPU inside being spread as thin as they are. So even if this card was bulky than that, they need to make sure it's a card that fits within that slot, which is the real shame that that slot inside there is times four and not greater than that. Now, of course, again, CPU limitations, chipset and more. So it's very much a cart before the horse and ultimately forward planning more and more. But to nonetheless, I'm glad the card exists. So if we have a little look and remove that heatsink on board, so again, we've got um, two screws, one at either end of the corners. So remove our first screw there, we'll remove our secondary screw. We can see if we end up with any um, silicon pads included with the, uh, the card as well. So there is, and we've got a couple of uh, silicon pads on the base there, but again, it's quite a thin heat sink, but again, based at the speeds we're talking about here, that might be sufficient overall. And it is a single plate that's attached with a couple of little connectors there at the bottom. Again, should be images in the article below. And each of the M2s don't require any screwing in. They're just directly into those ports and there's clips there to keep them down. The individual heatsink there for the onboard controller for that card there, more likely than not, it's going to be the Aquantia controller or maybe one of the real techs, but hopefully that'll be detailed there on screen and we'll do a thorough takedown of this card later on. Um, and what we'll do is we will be installing it inside this device and what we're going to be using is some Seagate iron walls. So I'm just going to get these installed inside. Okay, so I've installed the cards inside. There you go. They fit in lovely and slugly there. There's absolutely no movement. Always good to see. One of these things with plastic clips. I should have mentioned this in other videos. I'm less keen on these plastic clips unless they're done particularly tight and rigid. So I'm quite pleased that they're at least in there held quite well. Um, then we get our adapter here. We peel back our two covers and we start applying our lovely little heat sink there. And the heatsink is applied, so we can move that there to camera. So again, lovely little fit there, and it still maintains being one of the slimmest combo cards I've talked about. And we'll get that installed inside the system in just a moment. However, let's talk a little bit about combo cards and combo cards within the industry, because they're not the first to bring out combo cards, to be frank with you. Right now, at least in the world of NAS, they were not the first at all. The very first being the QNAP with their QM2 series. They released quite a lot of these cards and the pricing is quite variable. Their first generation, because they were the first to bring it to market, I would still say their first generation arrived a little green under the gills. Arriving in Gen 2 across the majority of those QM2 cards, that meant they arrived out of the gate with limitations in that bandwidth. And once you're talking about Gen 3 M2 MBEs or even Gen 2 M2 MBE slots that are using Gen 3 SSDs and combined with 10 GBE, that first generation, as good as it was, arrived some might argue less fully formed than people would have liked. And in the interim, while their drives, their M2 NVMe 10G combo card was in the market, Q, um, Synology eventually rolled out theirs almost a year and a half later in the form of the E10G20T1 card. Now, this is their 
10 GPE card with M2 NVMEs. And you may have already noticed a few distinct differences between this card and this card. For a start, their card is Gen, uh, is Gen 3 times 8 in times in terms of its PCI length, giving it 8,000 megabytes per second throughput, with each of those lanes uh, for the M2s being Gen 3 times 4 and that 10G. Still, not enough to fully allow the card and its 10G to saturate, but once you factor in, if you were to try to direct connect with these, you've still got to communicate with the NAS, it's still variable, but this is a much more expensive card. Again, the heatsink as well was a great deal bigger all the way along. And this card, the odds of this card fit in there unhampered are pretty slim indeed, especially uh, factoring in that PCIe slot. But this is probably one of the best examples of the combo card series at that time. And after that, we saw QNAP roll out their second gen of QM2 cards, this time hitting Gen 3 and Gen 4 series of cards. So when Asus Store brought this card to market, as, as mentioned, this was an already pre-established formula. However, it has to be stated that one, it took Synology a long time to roll out this card and that QNAP's first card was by no means a perfect version on day one. Whereas this card fits within their ecosystem very, very well. It's knocking around for about 199 nicker, So it still makes it arguably the more affordable alternative for combo cards in the Gen 3 sector, and it is very slim and compact. Now, there is the question marks around one, PC compatibility, and Acer Store are pretty vehement about ten, uh, PC compatibility not being certified at this time. So at the moment, you're only looking at this within the Acer Store NAS structure there. And I would say, Given that a lot of users went for this device with the uh, 4M2 slots inside, this works out as not a terrible alternative. Perhaps if Acer Store had rolled out this system with this by default on day one, that might have even been a big step forward as well. But fair play to them for rolling out this card. I just wish maybe it had rolled out at the same time as this system or even integrated within it. So, what we want to do next, we've already got a RAID set up on this device. And what we're going to do, I've already removed the screws for this. As you can see inside, there is the existing 4 times M2 NVMe card inside there. If we remove that card, and again, normally that card is held in by two screws. I've already removed them. That is the card that normally lives inside this system. Now we're going to install this card here, making sure, of course, that we want to remove the additional back plane because those of you that purchased the four and the six bay locker store may have noticed very early on that the system arrives with a removable cavity here for this card so clearly 10g support or at the very least the single 10g card prior to the combo card had already been considered during the development of this device but if we get that card and slot it inside there we don't need any back planes that default back plane will be sufficient it clicks straight in. It doesn't go in with the alignment, I would say, with the screw holes from the previous card, but you can screw the card in via the two available ports here on the back of the device. So we screw that inside there. And what we'll do in a moment is we're going to boot up this device with our brand new 10G and uh, 2 NVMe combo card installed and Utilizing a Thunderbolt to 10G adapter on my local laptop, we're going to access and do a few little tests of this card inside the system. Let's start getting this NAS put back together and run our tests. Okay, so here we are on the desktop of the Acer Store Locker Store for Gen 2. And as we go into the storage manager, you can see we have got those M2 NVMEs visible. Not surprising, because it always could support those. But of course, the real show and tell is the fact that now we also have a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. That means that this system has now opened up that extra gateway towards 10 GBE. But... It's worth highlighting that the installation is maybe not as smooth as I would like. This is perhaps to do with the architecture of the Asus door system and the fact that you have to remove that existing M2 board that's connected as an adjacent PCI board rather than on the main controller board. Probably the only way they could really get on those four additional ports there. Um, but by putting that card in there, you have to go ahead and install uh, an application that the system features in its app center known as the Asus Store NAS PCIe Switcher. And this allows you on here to go ahead and 
just ultimately flick between the um, abilities of this system utilizing that card now why is that significant you might be wondering well if we come out of that there because the actual controller board inside the Acer store is preset in that BIOS level to only do the M2 NVMEs in the lock store when it was first launched. So introducing this new card makes the system have to make a choice between the 10 GBE or the M2 NVMe support there. And now they've rolled out this card, they've had to create a new hybrid um, supported mode inside there when this system first arrived and its predecessor when there was to the talk about 10G or M2. So you have to go in there and as the mode here on screen suggests, you have to uh, install the application, switch to the M2 NVMe and 10G combined mode, power down the system, uh, remove the card uh, or swap the cards over and then reinstate the system. And as you can see, there is the choice between them. So do bear in mind, if you are going to flick and choose between these two system setups, you are going to have to, you know, do a little bit of jiggery poku there. Of course, you're always going to need to reboot this system in order to change PCIe cards. They're not hot swappable. But still, nonetheless, this is a kind of small extra step that a number of you are going to have to uh, go ahead with. Now, uh, there isn't going to be any benchmarking on this. I've been trying to do some benchmarking here in the background, and they're not quite as consistent and smooth as I would like right now. I think a lot of it is to do with perhaps the fact that I'm accessing those M2 NVMEs on the same PCI lane as uh, the 10 GBE connection there. But without knowing that for certain, I'm reluctant to publish benchmarks right now, given it may be a bottleneck that's being created. I am using the 10G Solo 10G adapter. They're going into a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, switch. So at the moment, there should be clear pathways there. But I didn't want to go ahead with those results because I feel like it might not do justice to the card and what it's actually capable of. Ultimately, with this card, I think um, Acer Store have done an interesting thing here by pr producing this combo card, perhaps a little later than a lot of their uh, larger uh, comparable companies out there, but at least you do have that option, and a lock store was always a well-equipped system to start with. Um, I do think the limitations of the Gen 3x4 slot are perhaps going to be a bit of a problem for some, and again, that kind of is another one of those small indicators that this combo card was developed quite a decent whack after the development of the Locker Store series, at least as far as architecture is concerned, and therefore they've been locked in on that 3x4 board on there anyway. But we'll be doing some benchmarks on this card for some comparative data soon, and although I do have the system uh, currently running, I believe in a RAID 0, for the sake of a quick setup of this device, I'm probably going to put that into a traditional RAID 5 for the sake of balance. If you can think of other tests that you want to see done with this card and with those SSDs within this architecture, do let me know there in the comments but for now this is my majority of my thoughts on this card i'm going to save my full judgment till after the benchmarking but other than that thank you so much for watching the video go to the links in the description do further reviews on the lock store series down there and otherwise use the free advice section over on nas compares and the community forum and ask nas compares other than that i will see you next time